Hey, nice to have you back. Here I am in the tiny house garden having a look at the pods. Um, these are a growing method that we've developed here over the last season because in New Zealand we've had a shit of soil. It's poured with rain. We've had floods and cyclones that have taken people's lives and people's property and the whole country has taken a beating weather-wise. We found that we were losing food source after food source here in the garden, so we had to take matters in hand and started growing under cover. I hurriedly built a greenhouse out of other people's rubbish. You can have a look at that video here. It's really worth looking at, trust me. And another thing we've done is we've been picking up car tyres from the local tyre shops. They're very pleased to get rid of them. No place will charge you to take these tyres because they actually have to pay to have them taken away. And the other thing we're using is frost cloth. Now, we also managed to get this frost cloth for free. We have a friend who does massages, and with each massage, one of these in a six foot length goes down on the table. So she gets four or five of these a day, which she can't use again. And so we bring them home, wash them to get any oils off them, and they get used as a free source of frost, of frost cloth. Now you can see that We've got an environment here, a little microclimate, that's in no way susceptible to rain, hail, wind, everything in here is protected. We've got sweet potato, New Zealand kubera, and they are prolific. These are going to get split up very shortly and put into other ones, but we've found that the only things that are growing are things that are undercover. Stuff in the greenhouse and plants in these. So how do we make these things? Let's have a look over here and I'll show you how I prepare the tires and then we can look at this covering a little bit more in depth. So those of you who watched the previous video would have seen me working on these actual tires here. What I use is my reciprocating um, builder's saw. Um, then you can get either electric powered ones or battery powered ones. They're a very capable reciprocating electric saw that you can use for, for many, many different jobs. And they have a range of different blades. I use a, an ordinary wood blade and cut into these tires at a specific point because down in the side wall further down, they have steel that you won't be able to get through, and also in the tread. There's steel in the tread, but at this point where the tread joins the side wall, all you're going through is a little bit of fabric and some rubber. It can be done even with a sharp craft knife, but with one of these I can do each tyre in easily under a minute. I think it takes about 40 or 50 seconds. So that simply gives us more growing area. But by leaving the bottom one in, we've got a little bit of stiffness and we've also got a water reservoir that builds up around the outside. So these things will never completely dry out. We'll be able to put our winter veggies in here, lettuce, brassicas, uh, some leeks and some carrots. Now for carrots, and potatoes also, you will want to stack these two or three high so that you've got some good clean depth. When I'm stacking them up, I certainly don't cut out these side pieces because it won't support the tire on top. Come up the top here and I'll show you some that are set up for carrots. Now this is a two tire setup set up for carrots. It did rain overnight so we've got a bit of water in here to get rid of. But it's a good chance for me to show you how the water reservoir works in the bottom lip. Well worth leaving that in so that you've always got this water but it's free draining through the middle. Any excess moisture is just going to go straight through into the ground below. Now we're forcing these carrots by putting some weight on it and keeping it dark, they work a little extra hard to grow. And in a day or two, 
we'll pull this cover off. In fact, you can see now, possibly. I think you can see from there, the carrots are starting to come up. So we'll take this off and they'll be away. Under here, same thing happening. Just starting to emerge now after uh, two days. So all these little tricks speed up your germination time. Another one is we expose all our seeds to a very, very strong neodymium magnet on the south side for 24 hours. And um, that also seems to have an effect. There's going to be videos uh, coming up shortly on what they're calling electroculture. And that's um, introducing these energies that are normally high up in the atmosphere and unavailable to us bringing them down and focusing them into plants that we, we specifically want to grow. It's an exciting subject. Anyway, let's get back down the other end and I'm going to show you how these tents are made. Now we do know that most of these tyres are either 6 feet 1.8 metres in circumference or for the big four-wheel drive tyres just a little more. So we're lucky we get this fabric that's already in six foot lengths because it's been used to protect a massage table and what we do is we use an industrial staple gun which every gardener should have because you will use it for um, holding plants up and uh, holding plastic down and things like that get yourself one of those light industrial staple guns that you can fire a staple into timber now they fire staples just as easily into tire rubber so it's held firmly at intervals of about uh, 200 to 300 millimetres all the way around with a staple gun. And in the centre, sometimes we use a wooden stick, sometimes we use a metal stick. Now, by using a metal stick, after you've studied the uh, benefits of electroculture on your plants, you'll be out looking for old television antenna radials, the aluminium bars that you see up on people's roofs that were the old TV aerials before we all went to Sky, Netflix, online viewing. Um, you'll find them at the dump, that's where we get ours from. But in here, we have a gorgeous little microclimate that's, that's appreciably warmer than the outside. It's also a pest-free zone. It stops excessive transpiration, which means that the enclosed environment stays humid and it, it re-waters itself with its own water a little more than it would if it was exposed and just evaporating throughout the day in the hot sun. And the other thing, of course, is when this is tucked tidily under here, It's very, very hard for those dreaded cabbage white butterflies to get in and lay their eggs. So we've got plants that are coming on faster. They're protected from any bad weather, even hail, because hail coming down isn't going to be hitting, hitting the square on that will deflect any small to medium hailstones. Um, less watering, warmer environment, pest free, the dark colour of the tyres is awesome. Whenever I put my hand on here, it's always warmer than the surrounding air, and certainly warmer than the surrounding soil. So we're warming the soil, we're warming the atmosphere, we're eliminating the pests, we're slowing down the transpiration, so we're saving water, and we're introducing the telluric currents from the upper atmosphere by having a metal spike in the centre buried in the ground, which helps the plants with their development and speeds up the growing and also the fruiting. Something else I'm working with is magnets. It's part of the electroculture experience. These have been harvested from microwave ovens. There are two of these strong magnets in every microwave. And by putting them with the self side up, you'll encourage strong, healthy root growth in young plants. And how do you tell the polarity of a magnet? There's two or three ways, but the simplest way is to get yourself a small compass 
and see which side of the magnet attracts the red side, the uh, pointer side of the compass. Because the compass is magnetized to attract north, it's obviously south. And it's the south side of the magnet that you want facing up. So that, so that you're augmenting and accelerating the magnetic flux lines that flow around the Earth. They flow from south to north. While I'm down here, let's have a look at the compost bins, see what's going on here. We've got a real mixture in the autumn. We've got a lot of stuff that we're pulling out of a disused garden bed where, that has been unused for probably a decade. We've got a little bit of plastic waste in here that needs to be removed. I have a bag close by down here where any little flotsam and jetsam that I find that makes its way into the compost gets put into this bag for disposal. But this is going to be a slow process breaking down all this fibrous waste. In here we've got mainly a mix of our daily food scraps and current leaf sweepings. And then the third one, that's closed off now. I've pulled all the big chunky stuff off the top and aerated what's left below and that's being left for another four to six weeks and the worms will finish their job in there slowly begin to migrate over to here because this is where the fresh food scraps are now being placed. So we'll be harvesting this one on the left in four to six weeks. The middle one becomes our current user and this one um, that's going to take quite some time because it's full of a lot of fibrous, fibrous root systems. It'll make lovely rich compost because there'll be a lot of nitrogen fixing going on. I'm probably even going to feed this one to speed up the composting with some of the compost tea that we've got making in here. Anything that's invasive, any of the Kikuyu grass or the uh, Wandering Jew, all gets put in here so that it stews down to a tea and we can withdraw that from the tap at the bottom to do regular weekly feeding on all of the garden. And the top of it gets turned into a sloppy black mulch that will eventually find its way onto here. And there'll be no weed seeds and it's going to provide us with a very, very nutrient-rich compost. Now last up for this video, I want to take you on a short trip down what I call pit lane because it's full of stacks of tyres. On the left here, we've got a stack of tyres that are going to become my potato towers. I've been growing potatoes in the ground down here, but as they mature and I dig them up, I'll be replacing any new seed potatoes into these two, and that will be my potato supply. In fact, one might be potatoes, I'm thinking the other might be strawberries, because I've discovered a new variety of strawberries that will keep fruiting for around seven or eight months of our New Zealand year. So moving along, I'm not sure what we've got under here, but we use these glass fridge shelves to force seeds and also the black plastic. Yep, we're seed forcing. We've probably got carrots in here because of the depth. Anna likes to go too deep on carrots, so you get a nice straight carrot. So there under there. In here, we've got Lots of Anna's lovely, lovely uh, sweet potato, the New Zealand Kumara. We've got some salad greens in here with plenty of diatomaceous earth on them because we've had a massive um, cabbage white problem over what we're laughingly refer to as the summer season. And the next one. I haven't got an opening on this side. Where do we go? Oh, we have. How do we get in? Let's have a look. This one is beetroot. My God, they look healthy, don't they? Don't they look well? I'm 
so we've got beetroot in there, beetrooting and looking down from on high I can see that we've got mixed salad greens now over the other side this is my wall of awesomeness um, we've got kumara at the top and the back here growing lush we've got brussels sprouts there and here they're just coming on we've got some leafy salad greens with something a little unidentifiable down the bottom here perhaps if somebody knows what these are they can leave me a comment down below but up here we've got some more brassicas i believe that these are also brussels sprouts and kale i don't know who's going to eat the kale now it's not an optical illusion there are three broken mirrors placed behind these tires and the reason is it's an experiment yep it's another experiment on top of an experiment we're experimenting with the black tires for growing in we're also experimenting with reflecting sunlight into the back of the plants to improve light because we're in a little bit of a shady spot here if I step back you'll see that we're underneath these two olive trees and it only catches about four hours in the afternoon but we're getting amazing results with the black tires the covers forcing seeds magnetizing the seeds 24 hours before they go into the ground with a strong magnet and also we're going to be working with magnetized water very soon. I'm completely rehashing the water supply on the property here so that we're uh, a little bit more autonomous. What I mean by that is I'm just going to be linking up two more roofs. I've got lots of roofs here at Tiny House and Off Grid Resources. And they're not all feeding the tanks. So now that I've got more people living here and we're using more water, I'm going to be working at providing us with a beautifully filtered, structured water system. I'm going to be working with magnets to structure the water to make it softer and actually wetter. We're going to have a water supply that is actually wetter and more concentrated than untreated water. This means that we'll be able to save water because the water we're using will have more effect. It will penetrate the structure of the cells of the plants and us and our food in a more efficient way than water that's travelled through straight pipes. Stay tuned to Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources because in upcoming videos I'm going to be keeping you up to date with every development of my journey into electroculture. I'm going to be demystifying the bunk and fact-checking the claims. And hopefully I'll provide you with some real live evidence.